This is a gymnasium in Richard State College. Right. And there's a lot of problems with studying karate. What do you practice karate for? You know, because it makes you more than what you are. And this, in this, this has just a nice little thing that, that was written here by this, this guy. And I just picked this up about a month ago or two months ago and, uh, when I was uh, pat out in Rosales Tournament. And I think this, uh, this is by, uh, who wrote this? Swami Rana. It says, typically our minds are restless and confused. Our attention flits from one thought to another. Through the course of a single day, we may experience many unpleasant emotions such as anxiety, depression, disappointment, anger, and frustration. We are pulled here and there by the many desires which we have. We are easily distracted and find it difficult to find the center of equilibrium. There is scarcely a chance to find rest and renewal. But meditation is a practice in which the beginning helps us find stability and calmness. We become free from the restless desires and disturbing thoughts which normally come before our mind and from our emotional reactions. As we progress in the practice of meditation, we come to find that disturbances are gradually replaced by an ever-increasing sense of peace and happiness. Our mental and emotional environment becomes purified and experience a sense of inner refreshment and joy. I think that that's uh, really, guys, uh, I think that's probably really sound and uh, it's well put. You know, people in karate have a real touchstone on reality. And, you know, I know a lot of you people are don't have problems, but you know, there's a lot of psychopathic people, or the people what they call the avoidance learning centers that aren't in karate. There's some of the most brilliant people in the world have the same thing. You know, they can't ever do anything right or whatever, but when they, say for example, they go to a flight school and become airplane pilots, they become absolutely superb pilots because they check everything on the list, they have a role model, and they do everything that they're supposed to do in detail. And they, just perfect. But you know, they're the ones that, when the weather's really bad, say, let's go out and see what's looking around, let's go out and fly and practice our blind flying procedures. And they're the ones that take the, the, the heroes in the war, and the guys, that, you know, the pioneers, the guys that go out and explorers and stuff like that. Those people have a really hard time getting a system in which they can operate, and one that can fully develop their capacity. When they start practicing karate, they have themselves a, a system that they can return to and be refreshed periodically. And so consequently, those people can develop themselves to an extraordinarily high level and do things that were previously impossible, even for most people. It allows you to be more than you are. It's a way to come back to reality and a way to structure your life in such a way that you can get a point, you can follow that, and you can really accomplish something. That is a critical key. The alternative is, you know, there's a lot of dumb people who don't have any problems. And there's a lot of people who fortunately have done the right things. But there's a lot of people who have not and who have had a lot of problems with their even though they may be tigers in the mind and everything else, it's really hard getting it together. And once they start practicing karate, they go to college, they get degrees, they become bright, they get good jobs, they have a good drive, and you can really see a difference. It's so important that if you were in the major countries in Japan, like that, unless you really practice, you wouldn't uh, really have a big position. Now, which price is it when you uh, get over 50 and you can still lift your knees uh, when you had a broken back? What price is it that you don't have bad varicose veins? and you can still walk around, you know, cardiovascular disease. You know, what's that worth to you? You know, I've asked people before what the, uh, you know, what they give for 10 more points in their IQ and a little better health and stuff. And they're not interested. But I said, well, what if you were to lose 10 points on your IQ? Have bad health. You know, be less than you normally should be. They don't want to even hear about that. The idea is that karate can create for you a real value, and it's important. And for me, it's done so much for me in my life. Here's you, and you should need to have other children. That's your payback there. Bring your children up too. And you deserve the right if your parents brought you up well, and you deserve to bring your children up well. That's a home. You owe it. You owe it to the family. And it's a continuation of home. You shouldn't genetically mess yourself up so that you pass on the wrong kind of structure to your children, mentally or physically. That's not correct. You shouldn't pass on your bad habits. That kind of thing. The own is important. The teaching and the carrying on of own is the most critical point. And there's a certain thing, you know, like uh, in my gymnasium, you know, uh, I think that sometimes people think that I come down here to teach uh, for my own benefit. That's right, I do. I teach for my own benefit, only for my benefit, because I'm repaying the own. Otherwise, it's a burden that I always carry. And there's nothing worse than a guy who doesn't discharge the own. He's considered a rotten son of a bitch in the most worst terms. The own must be paid back. You have no right to take if you don't pay back. None. The payback is important. And so in karate, all the time, the payback means that 
two things. One is that, you, that if you're taught carefully, you must practice carefully. And you must learn exactly what you're to learn. That's the first one, right? And the second one is that you must teach exactly as you're taught. Now, it's impossible to run a structure where you can learn. You realize that among the human animal, uh, there's so many variations, there's so many different ways of thinking, and so many different perceptions that even words can't convey the uh, uh, ideas we want. So we have protocol and procedures. And the protocol and procedures enable people to practice in areas where their minds are still bumping. When the guys are younger level in karate, they find a great deal of stress and push and shove among the little things. They don't like to work out with this person. This guy's hitting too hard. You guys have heard, that guy hits me too hard. He hits me, I'm going to hit him back. And if I hit him back, then he's going to get mad and his blood all over. You know, the guy's hurt me. This guy's nasty and mean, bad temper. And, you know, I really can't work with him because he's always talking too much or he's asking too many questions or he doesn't want to work out or he's sweating too much or doesn't change the uniform. All these things. And if you went to all the complaints, you couldn't even have a class. Now, the high rank, the real high rank, are valuable for their overview. They have an overview of everything and make sure it comes up, follows up correctly. The lower rank don't. They have an overview of themselves, maybe, if possible. At least they have the overview of the people under them, which aren't too many. So we have the protocol is extremely important within the system. The protocol is critical. The protocol comes down from, from the high rank, down to the next high rank, down to the next high rank, down to the next rank, and down to the bottom. You can't attack any one thing in the gymnasium without, you can't attack any one rank without attacking everybody. Even one person, attacking the next person up or the next person or the next person down, attacking everybody as a unified body. And you can't do it. And the hardest thing in the world to do is get people to keep their mouths closed and just simply wait, spend time. We have a very strict procedures between the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh times like that in our gyms. And it makes it very hard when the high rank don't practice. It makes it worse when the low rank don't practice. Do not practice. They should practice, all everybody, and they have a common understanding. And whether there's a personal feeling, plus or minus, doesn't matter at all. We don't even care about that. But what we want is a, the standard, flat courtesy across the board. And the courtesy that we have across the board for everybody, and, and within the system, is one does two things. We don't mention people when they're not there. We don't mention people when they're not there. If you can't say something good about somebody, don't say it. You can, what uh, the classic thing that Shakespeare said, you can damn with faint praise. But <laughs> you can say, like, the guy's a, uh, what do you think of the guy's punching? You're saying, well, it's, a, it's okay. <laughs> we have to be careful about that. Okay? So we want to be really careful about these things, because we have, I mean, in my own gymnasium, we have uh, hassles going on and off and on, and they, and they occur. And we have people fighting and people not fighting, this kind of thing. It's just really, just, it really dastardly. Because if you, if you quarrel with your fellow black belts within the system, that means that you're trying to destroy the system. The alternative is just don't quarrel, just stop. Stop. The biggest fights ever in the gym were Team Sparrow and I. They were the biggest ones I think ever existed. But, you know, you guys, you know, just stop. Don't do it. And, you know, that uh, now going to another standard, you know, like we have a lot of people now, another problem, we have people moving around from gyms to gyms. I got a lot of guys that, from Cleveland coming down into my gym, and like uh, if uh, they're working with Jeff and they don't know a form, like I mean, Jeff doesn't know on Sue, right? That's right, sir. And they like, like to run on Sue, they come run down and they find out maybe they're learning something down there, I tittle their fancy more than they did up here, then they want to come down here and practice for a while. And then they feel, oh boy, the teacher doesn't know as much because they want to go to the, the main Dahambu. And uh, uh, students moving around like that, that can be a terrific problem too. That can be a terrible problem. And the idea within our family is the humble, uh, the dojo down there is open to everybody. You guys are all welcome to come down, right? And uh, the students in the gymnasium, if they're going to fight, you're going to argue with them in my gym. They're just going to have to, and they're not going to support the system and things. They can just pay in like any other member. But if they're a, mem a member of the system and they're just reduced rate, you know. And we'll teach them. But when you come down to the gymnasium, you know, uh, the idea is that you're not coming down to to because the gym is better than the gym you're into is because you want to come take something back and when jerry comes into the gym and practice he comes in for because he'd like to take something back and danny comes up the same thing or when uh, uh regis comes up to practice he'd like to take something back he gets this idea and takes it back and then they all share it in the same sense that when uh, pat goes someplace to uh, say a seminar and he was at, in, in the seminar that i wasn't and he learned uh safer with this girl from uh thing and he came back and I'm all excited about learning what he learned. And a lot of times we'll come in and we'll do this up and pass it. Let's say you're, you know, your, your hands out here, you're not turning it over all the way around. So, wow, I better watch that one. You know, and I make over things too. So we take something back to the dojos and we share. 
That's the idea of practicing the Hanbu, is so that the general ideas can pass around. And see, I never really, I practice for me to be sure. But when I have a chance to learn something that will help you, that is really delightful to me because that means I can discharge part of the own. See, I don't have to carry that burden. And so when you come up to the dojo and you find something that's really exciting, take it back with a view of excitement, you know, and, and try to uh, try to go with the, with the view of the excitement of the, of, the, of the idea of the thing. Because in all truth of the matter, there's not one place to practice that's better than any other. Not one place. And there's not one teacher that's better than any other. Now, there's people in here that can learn under me like crazy, and there's people that can't learn under me like crazy. They have all different attitudes. It's important. The important thing is the allegiance to the system and the idea that a common goal See, our common idea, what we want to do, where we're trying to go, we want our people in, in our system to have really good zanshin, kime, atemi, and ma. And we want them to have good breathing, punching, blocking, and timing. We want them to be physically correct, and then we want them to be what? Uh, able to learn. We don't want them to harness to instruction. I've had Yukami, Kanazawa, uh, Everybody that's come up, Yamazaki, uh, all the masters that come into the dojo have commented on how the people in our dojo are humble and have an ability to learn. We can learn. And that's the thing. See, I've been able to learn rather than I've had other people that I felt were much better than me at the beginning, you know, and they couldn't learn. They destroyed your own learning process. Can you imagine a guy in karate destroying his own learning process? Could you imagine a man whose habits have destroyed his ability to practice and learn? You don't want to do that. And so all the protocol and all the respect for Don Grades that have been coming from that, it's an artificial thing. It has no meaning in anything else outside of artificial. You have very close relationships. And it does have a family sense of the self-fulfilled potential, the self-realization, the fact that you have older brothers, you have younger brothers, you have sisters, and always the responsibility of looking out for other people outside of yourself and being part of a, of a family that supports and, uh, and cares for you. It has that value, too, of the extended family. That's really important, you know. Most of you guys don't see your grandparents. You don't see your uncles and cousins and go home to that kind of thing. You really don't. And, if, and the Christ gems do provide that. They really do. But above all, but we know that people collide. I've seen some of the worst personality conflicts in the gym. Ten years later, they're the best friends. They really are. The worst personality conflict. We can't, that can't be allowed to rise. We must not do it. And as it happens to me all the time, if I get ticked off, right now I'm ticked off with a couple of my black belts. I know they had to work today. That doesn't make any excuse for it. I want them here. Too. They figure they know it all the time anyway, because they talk about it all the time, but I'm not satisfied with that. Well, I'm ticked off anyway, but I, I have to put that aside, don't I? If water's muddy at the top, it's muddy at the bottom. Now, you guys, if there's big hassles going on, can you imagine what it would be if it picked up among the yellow belts, and the blue belts, and the brown belts? Stability, you must know there's a structure to be able to move within that structure. That's critical. Is that right? And you must teach something that's correct, because if you teach it wrong and then they go back to main hombu, then they're going to see it's wrong and say, but you didn't tell me that right. Do you think you know everything? Do you think you know everything? Do you think you know everything? No, sir. Do you think you know everything? How about you? No, sir. How about you? No, but you give me a hard time about that back foot. <laughs> <laughs> really a hard time about that, but I came out right, wasn't I? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason why I should be right all the time. I just had a good batting average. <laughs> but the thing is, you understand we are a family, and now the Kwan Yukon is one of the biggest organizations in the country. It is the most prestigious, without a doubt. And we are one of the largest. We're huge. And we're very good. But now we want to be right. I don't care about the size. Because, you know, it doesn't matter. I never was satisfied being six foot. I've been six foot four. Been you know. I want to make sure that the little things are correct. If the little things are right, everything else will be fine. Don't worry about the jump sidekick. Don't worry about the jump roundhouse. Don't worry about all that jump. Just make sure that you have Kimi, Atemi, Zanshin, and Mai, and you have breathing, punching, blocking, timing, and Kiai, and that you're carried all the way through. And when you kick, your knees come to your chest, and there's a difference between the sidekick thrust and the snap sidekick.